You're about to view the 100th episode of Never Too Small. We thank you for your support and we hope you enjoy this episode and many more to come. The idea of rationalising everything into one joinery unit is a very reductive approach whereby we can shift everything to the boundary and create an open fluid space. The very simple material composition and detailing is related to my client's interest in a German designer called Nils Holger Mormann, where laminated plywood, laminate in various shades are detailed in such a way that gives a very minimal aesthetic. As we bring you our 100th episode, we'd like to pause to thank our patrons who've helped make this possible. If you'd like to support our next 100, visit patreon.com forward slash never too small. This apartment is located in Rushcutters Bay in Sydney. Rushcutters Bay is right on the doorstep of Sydney City. It's a, it's a really special neighbourhood in that it's entirely walkable. This building was built in the mid 1960s. The apartment is a total of 27 square metres. Our client was most inspired by a previous project of ours called Tara. But the client also had a very distinct idea of how that design could be adapted for this space and for his needs. The original condition was very simple and a little bit tired. The only change that we made to the layout was to remove the original built-in cupboard that divided the entry door from the kitchen. The primary objective for this apartment was to conceal everything in a single unit. The new joinery insertion is arranged from kitchen through to general storage, a place to work, a place to sleep, which is overlapped by the television. Upon entry, you're immediately into the studio space with the bathroom being a separate compartment to your right. The living and dining is an open plan space that feeds from the kitchen through towards the balcony. When my client moved from Germany to Sydney, he brought with him a dining table, a sofa, stools and dining chairs. The living room is defined by a simple sofa that faces the television. Once we had accounted for all of the functional requirements, there was no obvious space left for a television. So we conceived of a sliding panel that would conceal firstly the Murphy bed and secondly the office space. The handle for the Murphy bed is accessed by lifting up the fronts of the cabinets overhead and the cabinet fronts fall naturally back into position. The client who works entirely from home needed a substantial workspace. Concealed behind the sliding door is a niche containing a work from home office. The depth of the desk is greater than the depth of the bed, so it is required that it is a folding element. Next to the workspace, a secondary, smaller work surface conceals the cable management system. A banner of overhead storage runs from the end of the pod at the Murphy bed all the way through to the overheads of the kitchen. A sizable two-door wardrobe divides the kitchen from the office space. A combination sheer curtain and block-out curtain add a really warm and soft ambience to the space. The sheer curtain allows my client to filter light during the day and the blockout curtain is activated at sleeping and when my client wants that truly cinematic experience. The kitchen is a direct response to the functional requirements of my client. It's L-shaped and makes best use of where the existing services were, but also the need to integrate new and modern appliances. The kitchen contains a full-size flip-down dishwasher, an oven, an induction cooktop. There is a concealed service cupboard for a hot water unit and for a meter. And we have a sink with concealed bin storage. And there's also a full-size integrated fridge. Integrated LED lighting is fitted underneath the overhead cabinets in the kitchen. For an apartment of this size, there is really ample clean work surface in the kitchen. Underneath the service cupboard is a slender cabinet accessed from the kitchen side for things like vacuum, yoga mat, backpacks. There's a neat scallop detail at the base of that cabinet 
which means that we can run cable for power to the table for a desk lamp or a laptop. A glass door divides the studio space from the bathroom and allows natural light to permeate through the bathroom window and into the studio. The bathroom is a very challenging space because it's very small at only two and a half square metres. The shower exists in a very small alcove, so we employed a three panel folding shower screen system. And when the panels are opened, it means that the shower is a much larger compartment. The vanity is a wall mounted and floating unit and adjacent to that is the bathroom cabinet. The mirror is fitted to the back of the door so that the mirror is visible when the client is using the contents of the cabinet. All of the walls are finished in micro cement. There is a simple wall mounted light fixture directly above the basin and then a secondary tube light that emits a very bright light for showering. To rework an apartment such as this is to elevate the internal spaces to match that of the architectural intent of the original building. It then means that we can use outcomes such as this as a case study, not only for other people in the building, but also for future development. Thanks for watching. If you're an architect or designer with a project we could feature, please share it with us at nevertoosmall.com/submissions.